I am Sanchita Ghosh. Great. Um, so today we are meeting on a Sunday morning uh, to discuss the special scheme of assessment for board examination for classes 10, not for 12. Sorry, I uh, made a mistake here. Uh, but basically for class 10, social science in particular for the year 2021-22. To this effect, uh, the CBSE had brought out a circular on July 5th, 2021, which I'm sure all of us have read. It was a very, very detailed circular on what would be the pattern of assessment, what would be the different scenarios. I mean, can we hold online exams uh, or rather can we hold offline exams? What if we can't hold offline, then what will be the mode of online assessments? Uh, all of those, because uh, even today in India, I think not all states, uh, you know, have uh, in the same way reopened schools. In some of the states, uh, schools have been open for a while. They're now looking at bringing in uh, the younger children uh, as well. Uh, in Delhi, a lot of schools have not yet uh, opened their doors for offline classes. Uh, but some who have, uh, it's again, you know, only 10th and 12th student, standard students are coming in. Or in some, they're only calling in for lab uh, demonstrations uh, or remedial classes. So we've got a whole range of ways in which schools are operating at this time. Um, so CBSE has to take all of that into cognizance before, uh, you know, it can uh, uh, really roll out all of this. So uh, we've all been very impatient. They've said that the first term board exams is going to be November, December. So what does November, December mean? So is it going to be 1st November, 15th November, end of November? We're not sure. Uh, we're still waiting uh, for CBSE to release, uh, you know, a tentative, uh, the actual timeline, even if uh, it's not the actual date sheet. But at least if we can get a starting date. So I think CBSE is also currently working in overdrive. Uh, we have colleagues who work closely with CBSE and they also say that there's a lot of overdrive, a lot of thought being uh, going into the timing of the boards. Because remember, uh, uh, you know, December is also the time when you have uh, a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of entrance exams, uh, especially for class uh, 12 uh, into uh, technical colleges and all happening at that time. Uh, you also have a lot of class 12 students who are gearing up for admissions uh, to various private universities across the country and of course applying to universities abroad. So November, December is a, is a very tough time uh, for schools, for students. So CBSE is trying to take all of that into consideration and then creating um, the, the date sheet. So we'll just have to be a little patient and uh, wait for them. One happy news, of course, is that the sample papers are out. Uh, so we were kind of in the blind and I think uh, even the best of teachers, we were really taking, uh, you know, informed guesses or, or rather uninformed guesses as to what kind of MCQs, what kind of objective questions uh, that will be asked. What will be the OMR? What will the OMR sheet look like? Those of you who give Olympiad exams, uh, you know what. Uh, but each Olympiad, uh, each uh, uh, organization which runs Olympiads, their OMR sheets look slightly different uh, from the other. So what is the CBSE OMR sheet going to look like? What about students who've never attempted an exam on an OMR sheet? How are we going to train them? So that's, I think, again, for the teachers, it's a big uh, cause for concern uh, that, okay, in an online exam, I might give an OMR sheet, but do all the children have a printer at home to take a printout of the OMR sheet? You know, uh, India has students of all kinds. Um, so there are so many hurdles at this point of time. Uh, and as teachers, we're just trying to do the best. As students who are trying to cope, are the best you can you're asking your teachers questions so please keep asking those questions uh, i can see that there are uh okay these are introduction any questions just keep the questions coming um it doesn't matter i'm going to stop what i'm saying to address uh, your questions so please keep them coming don't hesitate um then let's go on into the main meat of today's um session uh at the outset uh, let me admit that this uh uh, slide deck was not created by me. It was uh, created by the principal of uh, the ITL public school in Delhi and she very kindly uh, agreed to share this with me um, because I don't believe in reinventing the wheel. So I requested her that, you know, um, I had seen that this somewhere outside and I'd asked if I could use this for today's wor workshop. So she was very kind enough to give me permission for that. Right. So uh, the first thing that the special scheme, of course, which kind of hit a lot of us like a ton of bricks was that the academic session would now be divided into two terms and each term will approximately test 50% of the syllabus. Fortunately, CBSE has also rationalized the syllabus, which means we have less amount of content to teach the students and students uh, will also have less amount of content uh, to study to as they prepare for the examination. 
online teaching isn't easy there is definitely a learning gap uh, that we see i definitely see that as a teacher the skills that i could have imparted when i was in person with the students uh, definitely uh, you know somewhere there is a dilution somewhere we uh, all struggled with that uh students at home you know there are 10000 distractions happening you know all around you many of you probably you know have a sibling studying with you in the same room so it can be quite uh distracting that way right everything is silent and then suddenly the teacher asks you to answer a question and you suddenly speak out and your sibling gets you know all shaken you you know what happened what just happened um so yeah it's like this in my home as well uh so definitely the doorbell ringing uh you know somebody uh some delivery or some some uh, distraction generally these distractions are absent in the classroom we are really focused in the physical classroom online teaching we've struggled with uh, these things but anyway that's a good thing syllabus has uh, been brought down um so of course this was an older uh um uh what do you say older uh, slide deck so which is why you see to be notified in july 2021 this was of course the notification and of course the rationalized syllabus has also come to us and i know all of us have been working along with it some of us were disappointed because we taught a concept that was uh, being deleted but doesn't matter i mean it's always good to uh, you know that the kids know more than required i always believe that we should always know more than what is uh, the minimum uh, requirement um so how is the curriculum to be transacted i think uh, you know most of us have been in distance mode or in mixed mode uh, with our students uh, we'll have three periodic tests which i'm sure your schools have organized already uh, there are student enrichment activities which we've been doing for a couple of years so that's nothing new our portfolio has been around for a while so that's nothing new as well uh, for class 12 some new practical work has been uh, introduced a project of course in social science we have been uh, doing uh, for many many years now so again a lot of it is actually nothing uh, new and no big surprises there um this is not important for us uh yeah uh, schools are also now required to create a student profile for all um, assessments so this is of course from the teachers perspective and we also need to uh, retain all the evidences in digital format so since uh, i'm hoping that you've uh, given work in digital form or collected work digitally even if the students have done uh, handwritten work in notebooks they've submitted that work uh, by scanning those notebook pages or taking pictures and sharing them with you so definitely you are supposed to uh, store this evidence in digital format uh because cbse may uh they haven't said they uh will definitely uh, uh but they will do a kind of a sample survey from across school so we uh, again are not sure of how it will work whether it will ask all the schools to send all the digital evidence which i doubt they might ask uh all the schools to send digital evidence only for a few students they usually mention the roll number that this is the roll number uh, of the child which whose work we'd like to see uh, but there is not enough clarity on that yet so we're still waiting for further instructions from there uh, but if you remember when we used to do cce uh, they didn't want all the children's work they would only take a few samplers right so i think that's what is going to continue because cbse does not have the manpower <laughs> to go through the digital evidence for all of the students who uh, you know who are appearing for the 10th uh, board exams um so this is now very important how will the exams be conducted let's look at the chat if there are any questions good morning by oh yeah bifurcated syllabus means that the syllabus has been uh, split into two so one was a rationalized syllabus which meant that if you were doing five topics for example uh two topics may have been removed from the syllabus keeping in mind the fact that uh you know uh most schools will be unable to complete and do full justice to the full uh, cbsc uh, syllabus so that's a rationalized syllabus that is a reduced syllabus and bifurcation means divide the syllabus right so the divisible syllabus has been divided into term 1 and term 2 right so i hope that answers your question great um right so um schedule will be flexible what this means we're not sure that can the schools choose their dates i doubt that because i don't think the cbsc can make multiple papers um so we are still waiting to see what that flexibility means waiting to see some dates waiting to, to see uh, perhaps uh, the date sheet very soon it's a window period of 4 to 8 weeks so again if they say 8 weeks then we are starting first or second or third of november um and we may expect that there will be no winter break which we usually get around christmas and new year time um so again that's something uh, which remains to be seen <clears throat> question paper um so in term 1 if i could just pop into the other one so if you look at the term 1 examination 
uh, it will cover 50% of the rationalized syllabus. This syllabus has been given very clearly on the CBSE website. What are the topics from across the four subjects of social science which are going to be tested in term one? Uh, time of exam, as we said, November, December. Duration of the examination will not be three hours, but one and a half hours, 90 minutes. Pattern of the question paper will, will be completely MCQ based and on OMR sheets. Uh, the kind of questions you will get are straightforward MCQs, some multi-level MCQs, you will get case-based or situation-based. Uh, among the uh, complex MCQs, you will get a search and reasoning kind of questions, which again uh, uh, was definitely there in 2019. So teachers are familiar with that. Uh, there'll be maps as well. Um, so uh, that we need to take uh, uh, care of. Who makes the question paper? They will come to us from CBSE. They will. Uh, they have said that they will provide us with the question paper, the OMR sheets uh, and the marking scheme. There are two ways in which uh, the schools will then uh, submit the work back. Either they will upload uh, the OMR sheets of the students or the corrections will be done within the school and the teacher and the school will be required to upload the marks on the very same day. So we'll just have to see how that pans out because there are these multiple options. Which option will finally work? We're not sure. Uh, of course, the idea, the, the main objective right now is to hold these exams offline. That is, the kids will come to their own schools for the term one exam. Uh, each school will have to make arrangements uh, to seat their own students to take the examination. Um, and uh, there will be some external uh, supervision and observers sent from um, you know, CBSE side so that they know that there no uh, unfair means are being used, all protocol is being followed, right? So all of that. If we go into second term, the second half of the of the rationalized syllabus will be tested. Uh, timeline is March, April, uh, which was the usual uh, time when we had our traditional board exams. Duration this time will be two hours. Okay. Um, in case if it is an offline exam. Okay. If it's an offline exam, the exam will be for two hours. You will have case based or situation based questions. You will have open ended, short and long answer questions. Right. Now, the venue of the examination will be the center fixed by the board if all goes well. In case we cannot do that, in case um, COVID does not allow us uh, to uh, you know, have offline examinations, then the time of the exam will be reduced to 90 minutes and it will go straight away to the MCQ formula. Right? So term two, there are these two possibilities, right? So in fact, in term two, you can have two very different kinds of question papers coming in depending on uh, the situation, right? All right. Um, so that's about the examination. Uh, OMR sheets are important. So I think we're all waiting uh, for CBSE to send us a sample of an OMR sheet so that we can run some practice uh, with our students uh, as well. Um, and marks of term one and term two will be accounted for in the overall score of the students. So you will see both the exams will actually be for 40 marks. When we see the sample paper, we will see. Um, so term one and term two for social science will be for 40 plus 40 marks, right? Uh, so uh, your final uh, mark sheet that will come up will be out of 80. So definitely take term one seriously. Do not take it lightly. It is not an internal examination. It is definitely part of the board exam. So you must be very, very careful. We've already discussed uh, the second term. So 50% of the syllabus, two hours in case we are at the center. If not, then it will be again a 90 minute with a completely MCQ based examination again through OMR sheets. Okay, so I think um, and theory marks, as you see, will be equally distributed between the two exams. Internal assessment will continue as it has been all of this while. So there'll be 20 marks for internal assessment. Uh, today, let's not spend a time on uh, that. So these are all the situations. So I think we can skip that. Let's move on to the question paper. We're almost uh, 11.22, so not a lot of time. Uh, we'd like to look at the sample paper in some detail since we, uh, many students have joined us uh, as well. Uh, any questions so far? No, I don't see any questions. Please put them in the chat and I will get to them as soon as I can. So let's uh, look at uh, the layout of the question paper for term one, right? Um, 
maximum marks is 40 time given is one and a half marks but let's see how many questions you have to attempt so you have to attempt 20 plus 18 that's 38 okay plus 10 that's 48 plus two questions that's 50 questions so you have to attempt 50 questions but you'll be marked out of 40. so it simply means that each question especially when it says all questions carry equal marks it means that each question does not carry one mark but it carries 0 0.8 marks right it carries 0 0.8 marks each of the questions now if the student scores in a decimal so if the student gets 17.1 or 17.6 uh, or 18 point whatever uh, it will be rounded off to the next higher whole number so even if it is a 17.1 it will become an 18 right so students can get some benefit uh, out of it so that's definitely uh, you know very thoughtful uh, in that sense to give the students maximum uh, benefit and for students this is very important there is no negative marking so uh, as i always uh, advise my students as well do not leave any question unanswered okay you must attempt all questions even if you don't know the answer try to take an intelligent guess okay in an mcq situation there will be times that you will not be sure of the answer but never leave it up because your intelligent guess may actually be correct and you will get marks for it right okay so um any questions so far okay there's one i can see uh is there any chance of getting questions from out of syllabus um aparna i don't know you're a student teacher um usually no uh, the question papers are very uh, carefully vetted but sometimes there can be error. Uh, multiple people can miss a question coming out of syllabus. Um, or, uh, over many years, we've often had, uh, you know, in, in uh, many subjects, suddenly a question which is out of the syllabus. Uh, so I know when the students, you know, come out of the uh, examination hall and we are there, teachers waiting and say, you know, show me your question paper. Uh, what did you get? And when the teachers quickly look through the question paper, all the students may say, ma'am, this question came or sir, this question came and we and this was not part of the syllabus. So CBSE does take that into consideration as well. So what happens is when the uh, uh, marking scheme is being made or when the uh, first workshop is, uh, you know, conducted after the conduct of the examinations, this is recognized right uh, um, there is a system where schools can immediately fill a form and inform cbsc that this particular question was out of the syllabus cbsc quickly takes note of that and forwards it to the subject teams uh, then the teams uh, then actually uh, consider whether uh, that application is uh, relevant uh, and if it is the instructions go out that if the student has attempted the question and has made a reasonable answer uh, it does not have to be the correct answer but if the attempt has been made then we give them the marks okay so that's why i say do not leave any question unanswered you might suddenly have a doubt but this, this was not there in the textbook this was not there at all okay or uh, so in that uh, circumstance usually students benefit is taken and a uh, student is given uh, those marks should we also solve exercises which are not in point of examination point of view um i would say you know the more you do exercise especially in subjects like mathematics and science uh, it only you know increases your 360 degree understanding of a subject um so sadly yes we often tend to be bound by the whole board examination system and as a teacher it always hurts me um but uh i would say do not spend too much time first master the content which is going to come for the examination then move beyond okay so it has to be a step-by-step -step progress so if you get distracted from the main content and you you know start having fun with something else great but that might have some negative impact on your examination i'm, I'm saying only might it may actually help you understand the concept so much better uh that that uh you know um you know you'll be able to answer those questions uh beautifully uh same for term one and two uh in terms of type of exam no term one is going to be completely mcq term two is going to be subjective as well considering if it's an offline exam uh if we have to continue with an online uh, exam or the pandemic situation does not permit us to for you to go to a center uh it will then be 90 minutes and mcq Okay, I hope that answers the question. Uh, all the questions can be answered as there is 20 out of 24 questions. No, but why do you want to waste your time answering all 24? Just answer what? 
so that's when you know you when you get those 15 minutes in the beginning to re identify the questions that you're confident about right so out of the 24 questions you've been given in section a i'm hoping that you will know 20 for sure okay but uh, don't waste your time doing all 24 because i'll tell you what um what happens is we're not sure how the omr sheet is going to be designed usually omr sheets are supposed to be mechanically corrected they are not corrected by humans okay they're put into a machine a scanner machine um and uh, they're checked that way so what the machine will do is uh, only look at your first 20 answers and not look at the others so uh, you just you've just wasted your time so my advice is don't waste your time uh Ma'am, a question is related to one or more chapter. How to think? Yeah, there can be a possibility where um, you can have one question where the where the knowledge uh, about that question, the content about that question, can be spanning from multiple chapters. You know, um, you will not. Don't worry about. Okay, this is from this chapter. Think about what the question is asking. Okay, so if I'm looking at question one here, for example, who among the following is a founder of Young Europe Underground Secret Society in Bern? uh don't think about oh is this question from the indian national movement is this question from vietnam is this question no do you know the answer to this or not look at these four options which one is the correct answer don't worry about chapter it doesn't matter okay uh in case a student attempts 24 questions from section a yes only the first 20 will be corrected whether they are right or wrong the last four may not even be checked by the machine uh, so we'll have to see how the machines are calibrated so um that's something which is out of our purview but uh, even if it is manual corrections uh, the thumb rule what uh, you know um uh, is uh, decided is that you check the first 20 you know you don't want to waste the teacher's time as well remember teachers uh, evaluators are under immense pressure they have to complete correcting a certain number of papers every day okay uh, so teachers are under immense pressure and if you're going to waste their time they're going to be now negatively biased towards you So we don't want the examiner to be biased against us. We want the examiner to want to give us marks. Okay. Uh, so what other sources can we refer to for the MCQs? Um, I think now question banks are coming uh, up uh, on the net, as I can see. A um, lot of private publishers are coming up. Check with your teachers uh, which source they think is best. Okay. Your teachers are very experienced uh, people, so it's always very good. Uh, to check with your teachers where should be and you know your your school your teachers themselves will give you lots and lots and lots of practice questions so don't don't uh, worry um, there are some websites that you can check but again with websites you never know who's making those questions what are their antecedents you at least know your teachers your teachers are very very dedicated uh, to the whole process they are always keeping themselves um, aware and updated about the latest trends uh, so i would say trust your teachers um, I'm not so sure about the other websites. So definitely check with your teachers. Uh, we are supposed to answer 50 questions, but is there a profit on answering all 60? You'll only be wasting your time, beta. And uh, the uh, calibration of the uh, of the OMR machine will only check 50 questions. Uh, and if it's being checked manually, uh, the examiner, as I said, might get a little annoyed with you um, and may get a little impatient with your paper. Uh, and we tend to lose focus. And I'm telling you from personal experience. right i go for evaluations every year and i can get very stressed out if students have attempted all the questions uh, and not you know the questions that they're supposed to you know the number of questions that they're supposed to so instead of checking let's say 20 answers i have to check 25 it's wasting my time and i'm getting very angry with the student okay we don't want that <laughs> okay in case a student attempts 24 questions from section a will yes i've already answered that uh question related to one or more chapters how to think i think i've answered this question Don't think about which chapter the question is from. Just answer the question. Can I speak and ask the question, Ashima? Since there are so many people, because if I give permission for that, I don't mind. But then you know we'll have too many others. So just write down your question, and I'm following up with those. Okay, some of you are answering uh, question one. Okay, weightage per chapter. Uh, it's there in the if you if you check the CBSE website, uh, it is uh, there in the revised curriculum. They've given chapter wise breakup, but uh, I always feel that CBSE doesn't always succeed in uh, sticking to those uh, weightage. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, 
I think weightage will be more or less equal across uh, chapters, right? Um, so it doesn't really matter. So prepare and and with NCQ style questions, you don't know from which part of the question the chapter they will ask. So it's always best to be very very well prepared with your chapters. Uh, student attempts twenty four questions. Okay, and uh, and in the sec second section of the student only scores ten. Ah, uh, beta. Each correct answer will get you zero point eight questions. It has nothing to do with sections. They've made it into sections simply because the type of questions in each of the sections is different. Okay, in section A you have straightforward MCQs. In section B you will have more complex MCQs. Section C has case based MCQs, and D has math based MCQs. So don't worry about all of that. Um. All right. Let's look at. Um. I've answered this. Do we need to leave question? Do we need to leave the four question from A section? Yes, you will attempt any twenty beta. Attempt any twenty from the twenty-four questions of section A. You can attempt any twenty. It does not have to be just the first twenty. Any twenty. You can leave a few in the middle. So there are four questions that you will. Ah, uh, you don't need to do. Um. So you can leave them out from the middle as well. So you may do one to ten, and then leave out question eleven, and do twelve to fifteen, and then leave out one more. Um, see, um, it doesn't matter, uh, Amina, because uh, we need to do. We need to do questions in series only because it will be an OMR sheet. So whichever order you attempt in, it comes out standardized. Um, if you've ever seen an OMR sheet, let me see if I can just pull up some OMR sheet. Um, I know people who have never given. Um, And Olympia, they generally don't know what an OMR sheet means because in school we generally don't do that OMR sheet. Let's see what images I get on Google. Okay, yeah, lots of images. I'll show you what the one of those look like. Okay. Um. All right. It's just taking a little while longer to load. Right. So, if you look at this OMR sheet here, okay, this is what it will look like. I'm guessing. We're not sure if it's exactly going to be the same way this way. Uh, so, whatever you might want to start with section D. Okay, you might want to start uh, with section D. So, it doesn't matter which order you start. This is what the sheet will look like. So, it's it really doesn't it really doesn't matter which sequence you do it in. But yes, for term two, if it's a descriptive, I will always recommend you do it in a series, uh, because uh, you know, as an examiner, um, you know, I get into this groove when I'm correcting, and the moment that is upset, the the evaluator can get a little annoyed. As I said, we we work under crazy pressure, and then number of mistakes go up. Um, first twenty questions, as in number two. We have given the answer. It will be correct. But uh, whichever twenty you do. Doesn't matter. The machine will check it. Uh, for example, if the student attempts twenty-four questions and all of them are correct, it you will only get twenty. But you will not get twenty-four out of twenty. So as I said, don't waste your time. It will only mark you twenty out of twenty, not twenty out of twenty-four. Ma'am, should we attend first or last twenty? Any, any, any twenty. If we practice like we practice for descriptive papers, will it also be in the practice for MCQ? Mm, yes, in a way because it helps you master the content. If you're writing out your answers, like some of you, I know, uh, you uh, write and you practice. Um, you write and you practice. Uh, so yeah, this this helps you master the content. It help, obviously help in uh, MCQs as well. Term one exam is offline or both. Term one exam, as per the Plan A is offline. That you will go to school and do the examination. If COVID numbers are very high at that time, then it may be online. Okay, but right now we are going with the understanding that it is going to be offline. You will go to your own school and you will attempt the exam. Um, if we practice like we practice, okay, I've answered. Yes, uh, Sairam has put up some content for you to check out. Um, same question coming up multiple times. If you're giving a practice test in September, not on OMR sheet, which is happening in my school also, if a student attends all, 
see if you're giving your practice test your teacher is going to check the papers and uh, again if you've attempted all 24 your teacher will only mark give you marks out of 20 so you've only wasted your time that's it same 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 question omr is not a tough thing just be very careful okay so read the question carefully okay and then look at the omr sheet look at the question number and then match what option and then color that uh yes uh, dr chobe that's my idea i will definitely be doing that how much time do we have left 20 minutes <clears throat> Okay so let's just move on a little bit here and uh okay erase somebody is asking a very very uh, important question let me just get that using a pen is the problem yes so what i always recommend to my students remember 90 minutes is a long time when you're doing an mcq okay so you've got enough time so what i recommend is first mark with pencil on the omr sheet or i'm i'm not sure how, whether the cbsc uh instructions will allow for that if you can you know mark the right answer in your question booklet they may not allow it so what i would recommend is mark in your omr sheet in pencil and then once you've answered all your questions okay review that once and then once you're sure of your answers then just color those in in pen okay write it over the pencil does not matter okay webs best website for mcq sample papers not too many have come and the ones that i've seen they're not very good so i'm i cannot make any recommendations right now all right um let's look at the question paper for some time and then we'll go back to the questions so section a as you can see okay they're all very straight forward mcq questions you have one statement and then you have four possible answers right so who among the following which of the following then you have identify the correct statement so this is a kind of a true and false but here you identify the correct statement from the four statements given to you um then you have which of the following countries were involved in the three wars with prussia and ended with the victory and unification of germany so this is a straight mcq but on a simple mcq uh when i say straight forward or simple mcq i'm talking about the structure of the mcq it's, it does not mean that it's a simple question so question can definitely be more complex right but you have one statement and four options that is what is meant by simple uh mcq not easy mcq um then again one statement identify the ideology under which people demanded freedom of markets in early 19th century europe so which of these four philosophies ideologies are relevant to this uh you have a fill in the blank uh, type question here so you've got a statement with a blank and you have these four options of which uh, you choose one from this is match the column a certain format of match the column so you've been given two pairs or rather four pairs um so what kind of crop is being grown in which uh, state uh, so groundnut and assam tea in gujarat coffee in karnataka sugarcane in chatisgarh now you have to identify which one is the correct pair so there are uh, out of four uh, pairs three are incorrect one is correct so identify the one correct pair in the blanks we've seen uh this is um a question a single statement question which of the following conferences was convened to discuss environmental protection and socio economic development at the global level in 1992 this is pretty straightforward from the textbook actually um okay here you have one statement and a question which follows from that one statement right so land has a uh, uh, india has land under a variety of relief features which of the following features ensure perennial flow of some rivers which provides facilities for tourism and ecological aspects long question what is the focus here perennial flow of some rivers okay so which of the following features so do plains ensure that uh, a river will have water flow into it perennially does a river have to flow through a plateau does a river have to be in an island or does a river have to come from the mountains to uh to have perennial water flow so this goes from you know when uh, uh when you uh, talk about um you know the the uh, uh rivers of the deccan and the rivers which are or originating from the himalayas so now you got your answer there so don't get distracted with the tourism and ecological part your uh, focus really is perennial flow of rivers 
which of the following human activities has contributed significantly in land degradation i think again very very straightforward question nothing to twist in that again single uh, which of the following countries adopted majoritarianism in their constitution pretty much straightforward again you have pairs no you don't have pairs you okay sorry i saw the dash and thought this was pairs so uh, you have reasons of power sharing okay identify the significant reason for power sharing so this could in a way be a true and false so which is the correct option as far as reason of power sharing is concerned so choose any one does it reduce socio economic conflicts provide ethnic cultural development allows people to enjoy specific rights or restrict su supremacy of one party so what is the most important reason here for power sharing what are the reasons for power sharing remember we talked about three three or four reasons for power sharing in paul sands Uh, apart from central and state government belgium has a third kind of government so identify this third type of government from these following uh which of the following countries is an example of coming together federation pretty simple why is the power shared among different organs of the government called horizontal distribution of power so you see um had it been a descriptive question what are the reasons or rather uh uh what are, yeah what are the reasons for horizontal distribution of power that would have been the question and it might have been for a three markers euro three points um or whatever right here they've converted this very same question into an mcq so they've given you four reasons here identify the correct one so again a kind of true false in india's federal system the central and state governments have the power to legislate on all those subjects which are included in the which of the following okay straight forward again which of the following states in india india enjoy special powers under article 371a straight which one uh, of the following is an example of primary sector activity again is it baking outsourcing farming banking which one so you identify which kind of uh, economic activity this is and then you identify is baking a primary activity is outsourcing a primary activity or is farming or banking a primary activity which of the following uh, measures the proportion of literate population in the 7 and above age group so which of these following practices helps you measure the proportion of literate population in the country which of the following is a correct meaning of average income so it's a definition type question so instead of asking you to okay uh, uh, what is the definition uh, of average income they've given you these four statements of which you identify the correct definition for average income uh, which of the following is a best describes human development index again it's a kind of a definition of feature based question consequences of environmental degradation do not respect national or state boundaries so that's a statement then you have a question which of the following is the essence of this statement so which one of these gives you a true example of uh, the fact that consequences of climate change or environmental degradation does not bother with political boundaries okay which of the following examples falls under organized sector again straightforward question now this is like complete the sentence kind of question okay so you've got a sentence here about mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act of uh, 20 uh, 2005 and which guarantees 100 days of minimum 100 days of employment so if the government is unable to fulfill the government will have to do what then okay so complete the sentence now we come to section b now section b will usually have a slightly more complex structure of question the answers may be simple the question may be simple it's just the uh, construction of the question which is uh, complex more complex than what we've seen in section a uh, so you have a image based question right so you've been given an image of uh, germania here and you identify uh, you know obviously from the four so i've already told you this is germania now remember if there are students with a uh, visual uh, impairment they obviously cannot do a question based on visual identification so um don't waste your time if you're not visually impaired with this question right <clears throat> then we come to question number 26 now see how this question has been structured there are two steps to this question you read these three statements so which of the following options are correct about the balkan nationalism so you read these three statements and then from these three statements you identify which one or ones are is or are correct so there could be one which is correct could be two which are correct 
all three could be correct as well but of course here you have one and two two and three only two only one options given just because some something says all of the options are correct does not mean that that is the answer okay a lot of children tend to think that if we get an option of all of the above or none of the above then that would is the most obvious answer no it isn't so read each of these statements carefully so you see how there are two steps to attempting this question so actually it may be a very straightforward question it's a very simple question but the structure is more complex i'll just take up questions in another 2 3 minutes why did the weavers in silesia uh, revolt against uh, contractors in 1845 identify the appropriate reason from the following options okay so these are again statement you look at the statement and see which one is correct identify the major aspect that helped in the formation of a nation state in britain um these are longer statements so which is why they've been put in section b here again this is a two step so you've been identify the soil with the help of clues so you've got three clues read these three clues and then find out which of the following soil type this uh is uh giving you okay uh this is hinting at rather uh so again two step which of the following categories of resources can be put tidal energy in pretty straight forward but i don't know why they put in section b but anyway there it is then um again two step look at the following statements and uh on power sharing and select the correct answer using the codes given below so power sharing is good for democracy it creates harmony in different groups it brings transparency in the governance it brings socio political competition among uh parties right so read these four are all of these four correct about power sharing or which ones are okay so two steps again to this question um okay one more question and then i'll look at uh what questions are coming up okay how does judiciary act as an umpire in a federal nation so you think now about what is the role of the judiciary that's what um uh, Uh, in a federal country you have unitary countries also which have judiciaries their functions are quite different from that of a judiciary in a federal nation so think about those and only then can you answer these questions so these are these are kind of questions which make you think a little bit more right okay let's see some questions mm mountains okay you some of you have answered the questions okay what is umpire you watched cricket they just very No, you've not watched cricket. Um, okay, football. In football, we call them the referee. Okay, umpire is someone who gets involved when there is any situation of conflict between two or more parties. Okay, so yes, so anyone who watches cricket would know what the umpire's job is, and the judiciary's role is. Uh, among the many roles that judiciary plays one of that is an umpire and umpire in a federal nation i think if you don't know the meaning of umpire you may not be able to answer this question at all okay so does the judiciary rule over center and state center and judiciary work collectively courts can change structure of the constitution courts use the power to interpret the constitution so how does this define judiciary's role as an umpire Okay, who'd like to attempt this answer? Which one do you think is the correct answer? Okay, in the chat, D. Courts use the power to interpret the constitution. Yes, D will be the correct answer here because what do umpires do? Umpires know the rules of the sport really, really well. So, uh, in my opinion, I think the LBW is the most controversial of all of the system of outs that we give to the batsman. um because there is a uh, there are uh, there's a lot of specificity to this whole lbw thing but um when we when we look at it when when we see the match going on uh the umpire is looking at the whole situation from a certain perspective so sometimes when it's a very close call often the umpires will do something like that which means we're asking for the third umpire so who's the third umpire there again a group of umpires who are looking at the replays you know making it very slow to check it from all the angles uh and now of course technology is so much greater that you know how the ball falls uh on the uh, uh, on the pitch and what angle it is most likely to take so think about those days when all this technology wasn't available when i was growing up and i was a kid uh there was no third umpire in cricket there were only those uh you know two on the on the field okay so uh yeah um 
so that's the job of the judiciary so the courts will use so if there's a conflict between the state and the center the courts will look at the constitution interpret the constitution and then give its judgment in favor of either the state or the uh center right okay <clears throat> Okay, assertion reasoning, not my favorite type of question and I think uh, among all of the question types, in my opinion, this is the toughest because they're not always straightforward. So let's look at this particular question. So what is assertion? Assertion is a strong statement with the assumption that, you know, what I'm saying is true. It may not be, but that's it. I'm asserting that. So what am I asserting? That Sri Lanka adopted Sinhala as the only official language of the state. That's a statement. Could be true, could be false. Then reason is the reason given for the first statement. The government of Sri Lanka wanted to foster their culture, language and religion. So what are the four options? That A and R are true. So is statement A true? Go to the chat and tell me. Is A true? Just say true. Is A true or false? If it's false, you think, put false. True, 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 true. Yes, it is true. Sri Lanka has a majoritarian government. So they adopted Sinhala as the only official, officially recognized uh, language of the state. Second statement, that is the reason the government of Sri Lanka wanted to foster their culture, language and religion. Do you think this statement is true? Just go to the chat and say true or false. Okay, yes. So the second statement is also true. So obviously C and D are now ruled out. Okay, so we have option between A and B. So both are true, but is R the correct explanation for A? So go and tell me in the chat whether option A or B. Just write A or B. Okay, I see only one person who's written B. So that's PVK Rao. You want to unmute and tell us the reason why you chose B? Because you were the only one. No, there's one more who said uh, option B. Wait, where did I miss it? Yeah, Neha also says it's B. Kiran says B. Everyone else, I think, is saying A. Tarani Priya is also saying B. Okay, I would go with A because majority and government only wants to foster its own culture, language, and religion. And here, if it had said only religion, then it would not have been the correct explanation. True, but not the correct expression, but we definitely do see language here. So, which is why R is the correct reason for A. Uh, so, I often advise my students that try to avoid the assertion reasoning question if you can. You have a lot of choices, but if you can't, think very carefully. Okay, right. Now, you have matched the columns. So, uh, instead of just choosing the correct pair, here you have to match them correctly. So information technology comes under which of these lists? Police comes under which list? Education comes under which of these lists? So identify that and then choose. So is it A? So information technology, is it under residuary subjects? Police is three state lists. Is that so? Yeah. Uh, th education three. Is it in the concurrent list? And is defense in the union list? Okay, so you have to match these this way and then identify the correct code, right? So this is again a two step. So these kind of questions will take you slightly longer than the straightforward direct MCQ type questions. Okay, Anita is appearing in an examination conducted for recruitment to central government positions in how many languages as mentioned the eighth schedule can she opt to take the exam? So this is the knowledge is right there in the textbook. Okay, but they're kind of giving it to you as a as an example so basically the question is asking how many scheduled languages are there in our indian constitution so how many official languages does the indian constitution recognize so is it 18 languages 21 22 or 25 okay okay am i missing a question here no okay <laughs> right so uh now you have another interesting question type again in two steps so Identify the administrative system of Indian government with the help of the following information. So three keys have been given to you. And now reading these three keys, you have to tell us which of the uh, forms of government mentioned here are 
appropriate to these three statements so are we a federal system unitary federal system decentralized system or a unitary system or a federal system sure sure we are not a unitary federal system we have the state government which is sorry central government which is the most powerful even though we have autonomous states they don't have full autonomy by the way okay i have i have a divided house here so some start with a some are saying c business d decentralized system are we decentralized hmm. okay shall we check the marking scheme okay let's check the marking scheme for 6 you're right it's a decentralized system why because you have to look at these three statements okay you have to look at these three statements and then base your answer on that so don't just go oh acha india is a federal country like yeah no it has to be based on these three statements so you getting what i'm saying that these are not as simple and straightforward as they seem which is why they're in section b so section b questions make you think a little bit more Okay, which of the following options prove that India is a quasi-federal state? Okay, so these are these four hints that are given. Which of these are correct? Which of these really uh, explain India as a quasi? Because we are not a truly federal state. Okay, we are not like a true federation like USA, for example, where each uh, constituent state has a right to secede from the union if their legislatures vote for it in majority. Right? Our states don't have that right. again correct statements which of these four are correct statements so again it's a two step mcq you have another assertion reasoning question so that's two now let's take this up as well human development mentions how much socio economic development has happened in a country that's your assertion comparison of national income of two countries explains human development index so are a and are true you give me options naman is giving you all the answers as all as options <laughs> okay which one is uh, i mean is one of the statements here false okay a is true r is false some of you are saying so c would be the answer okay Okay again choose the correct option uh, this is very much like those choosing the correct pair so is the courier system a tertiary sector fisherman is he from the secondary carpenter primary transporter secondary which one therefore is the correct pair out of these uh geography and economics can come with some data tables um so you need to be careful about that i hope you have been practicing reading data in class um so how to read this data here you have a comparison of three countries on the monthly income of citizens in the year 2000 in rupees now based on this data you you've been given a case here so rita is an employee of a multinational company who gets transferred to different countries after every 3 years of service she has been given an opportunity to choose any one of the three countries mentioned in the table above as her next job location she calculates average income of all these countries as per the given data and chooses to be uh, transferred to country a so identify the reason for which rita has chosen country a so you already been told she's chosen a but why so think of the reason so this is a pretty higher order thinking skill question okay so she chooses country a based on what most of its citizens are rich and stable has most equitable dis uh, distribution of uh, income national income of its citizens higher average income of its citizens is lower this is a complex question makes you think a great deal quasi means false okay the word quasi means false uh so we are a false federation in that sense because uh, our uh, states cannot separate from the indian union so does it have the most equitable distribution
is that the reason you're all saying i think that is what a lot of you are putting in all right now you have something with body mass index so this would be a formula that you would have learned in a uh, class how do you calculate bmi weight and height okay and you do a bit of calculation and you reach the correct answer here so you've been given uh, an example of a woman who works in a sweet shop in the village on contract basis and gets a meager salary after working the entire day she doesn't get any holiday or paid leave rather her employer deducts her salary whenever she's absent from work so which sector is she working in primary service organized unorganized okay so based on how each of these sectors work you have to identify where this woman might be working okay again two step you've got some data here read that data out of the three sectors why did the ratio of employment in primary why is sorry it should be why is the ratio of employment in primary sector high select the most suitable option from the following are there underemployed low job opportunities in secondary efforts of labor are not equivalent in all outsourcing of job opportunities in secondary sector so primary sector has the highest number of uh, percentage of employees why is that again another research reason so that's the third one in the chapter so crude oil reserves in the entire world are depleting we need to find a sustainable substitute oil and petrol prices are increasing day by day true or false if both are true then is r the correct reason for a i think here the answer is pretty much obvious okay uh just a couple more minutes and we'll be done we're almost at the end of it um this again you've been given a few sentences from which you identify which type of employment uh this is so he's in a food processing farm lot of manual work his wife and daughter also help him uh on his uh, with his work on the farm every day so is it underemployment seasonal overemployment cyclical employment so from the types of employment and how we define each of these identify uh, the the nature of employment uh in this example then you have case based the section c now this is interesting you have um two cases given to you each case comes with six questions so that's a total of 12 you have to attempt any 10 so you can either do 5 and 5 from each of those questions or you can do a 6 and 4 or 4 and 6 so you've got the example here from um the grimm's fairy tales this is straight from the textbook uh, so the case study can either be taken from one of the source boxes okay or it can be from the main text also okay there is there is no differentiation so you can have them from the main text as well so a passage is given to you on the basis of this passage you will have the next six questions so question 47 it's a, a single statement a true false type of question you've got four statements of which you identify the correct one sometimes they'll ask you to identify the incorrect one also so please be careful what you read okay uh in fact this is also uh, straight forward identify the best suitable option depicting the same that is was the impact of literary contribution of grim brothers widespread what all did it do did it help with anything then you have a fill in the blank question right you got a sentence and you pick up the best possible word and you place it here why the foreign domination was considered a threat to nation building select the best suitable so see this question is not directly from the case that has been quoted but it's from the context of the passage that has been given to you right because grimm's brothers fairy tales also had a role to play in nation building in uh, in europe okay so it need not necessarily be from the case directly so which means you need to know your text content very very well uh, then how were the germans able to connect with their culture with reference to the above context so again this is a context you may not find the answer in the passage given to you okay another assertion reasoning question so that's your fourth of uh, the question paper um so a regimes of interfering did not tolerate criticism and dissent uh reason conservative regimes were autocratic so are both statements true if yes is r the correct uh, explanation for a then you have your second uh, case given uh this is i think from geography or is it economics um and one can infer again uh it will be either from the main text itself or one of the information boxes uh straight forward question here two step mcq that we talked about earlier 
okay reason uh, uh, you know according to the information given, given below there's been a reduction in the net sown area under cereals and pul- pulses so what is the reason for the reduction of the net sown area under cereals and pulses then again you have a statement based questions you've given a statement in for the positive effects of these inputs noticed earlier from the following statements okay um there are states in india which are using fertilizers pesticides and insects insecticides sorry at excessive levels to increase their agricultural production identify the states which are at a prominent level from the following um options so again these are this is a direct kind of question food production provides a base of food security and is a key determinant of food availability why is this trend shifting towards industrial crops food is very important why are farmers choosing to move towards industrial crops choose the correct option from the context here okay so which is the correct one and then finally you have a map based question here you do not have to locate uh anything locations are given and marked for you you have to identify based on the hint given in the question so what is the first one uh the place which is marked a is a dam identify which dam from the following list okay so a is marked for you and what all dams do you have in this region identify then place marked b is a major tea cultivating state which one so a state is marked for you as b identify which state is known for tea cultivation and then those who are uh, uh visually impaired for you uh, uh for those students we have uh you know a similar question but not map based so they will just choose from the following four which of the dams is located in uttarakhand uh and which of the following is a principal cereal crop right okay um right so before we wind up we are 9 minutes over time so let's take up a few key questions anything that i have had might have missed uh, sairam if you could just uh, tell me i've been trying to follow all questions as i as well as i could because there were lots coming in and uh, sairam has also shared with you various links so if you want to take practice tests uh you know uh, you know save these links and you can go and uh take these practice tests thank you very much uh, sanchita ma'am it has been uh, uh, you know you have given an idea of what all questions that the students get uh, re- related to assertion reasoning questions or uh, match the following or whatever even the map uh questions have been discussed that's that's really nice and the uh, students i hope you got an overview of what are the things that you might get yes coming to the omrs so that depending on the session uh, depending on depending upon the situation at that particular point of time whether it can be online or offline cbsc will guide you your school will guide you at that particular point of time so uh it's too early to actually comment on that but anyways you you have to be prepared for your exam so be it online or offline right so it's not it doesn't matter actually so yeah, just actually first term doesn't prepared. matter because uh, whether it's online or offline you will have an mcq based question the worry will come in the next uh, yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah thank you very much uh, sanchita ma'am and uh, coming to our app here this is our app that is super teacher official live learning app where you can download it directly from the play store and then if you are an ios user yes we do have uh, we do cater to ios as well that is my institute is the name of the app once you download this my institute app on your ios devices from the app store uh, you will have to use the organization code called as a kapa that's it thank you very much and more videos are going to come thank you very much hope to see you in the next video take care bye bye stay safe